Hey there. So our next activity is going to be in color. Yay, we made it to color. And we're going to be using watercolors as well as um, some black paper. So to get you started, you do want to have your watercolor paper out. You want to have a container of water, your brush, and your watercolor set. And we're actually going to use probably all of these colors with the exception of brown and black because we really want to have color. And how much you decide to do a concentration of these colors um, is entirely up to you. Maybe you're not a fan of orange and you don't want orange in your piece. That's okay. Um, but you decide where you place your colors and how you're going to put these together. But I am going to show you a couple things. So the first thing is... Um, we're going to be using a method that we call working wet on wet, which means um, you're going to take your brush and you're going to pre-wet a portion of your paper. Now, um, in the past, I've had students who have tried to rush this a little bit, and it does not work out well. Um, you want to do this in small sections because that's the way it's going to work best for you. So I'm going to start out um, actually probably with some blue. I'm a big fan of blue. And I want to get a lot of color on here. So your goal when you start adding color is to get it as dark as you can. And there's a reason for that. Um, we are going to explore uh, a concept, the concept of texture, and specifically visual texture. And there's a way to create that. If you work wet on wet and then you put a high concentration of color on your paper, then add on saran wrap and really crunch it up you're going to create areas that are going to be highly concentrated with watercolor lines. Those are good. We want those. So that's why I want you to do section by section because eventually the water is going to dry. And you don't want um, your color to get light. We want it to be really dark and rich. And the idea is you're going to fill up your whole watercolor paper with colors. I have had students who have done stripes of colors. I have had students who have done little bitty sections of colors and put in little sections of water of uh, saran wrap, and they've done it. I've had students who've started from the center and spiraled their way out. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Now, I'm just going to show you an example piece. The end result, when you take off the saran wrap, you're going to get something that is really, really cool. Almost looks like... Um, uh, fractured glass or ice. This was one that I just did all in blue years ago to share with students. And all of the areas where the saran wrap, you know, pushed that color, it dries that way to look super cool. All right, so where are we going with this, you say? Well, let me show you a couple examples. So the next part is once you've got your colored background done and fully dry, then you're going to create some kind of stencil with black paper to put on top. So this is an example one that was done a few years ago by a student. Let me turn it the other direction so you can see it a little bit better here. Um, and this student decided to go um, fully geometric with her design. So big piece of black paper. She used a stencil to create a, um, a parallelogram. And she spread it out throughout her black paper. Some areas are closer. Some are further apart but it creates a really interesting image for um, you as the viewer to see. I had a student just last year who did this amazing piece. She was very interested in Mickey Mouse, loved Disney, so she created a little stencil to use and she traced it several times on the black paper, cut it out very, very carefully. That's another option. You could also go and create something that is more of a silhouette. So this particular piece was done by a student who wanted to create a background um, that was very colorful and then the foreground have an image, which is really cool. She's got this beautiful deer that is running across the scenery with these trees. So that's another way to go about it. So you have a lot of options here, which is great. And so, for example, um, right here, I have a black background that, or a foreground, I should say, that I cut out with a lot of different circles and then have just placed right on top. And then you have a really interesting colored image coming through all of these shapes. So the final step would be just to go ahead and glue this down. 
one thing that I did was I created a border so that I knew on the inside of my piece where I had to add all of these shapes. It also is perfect because then I can add the glue right along this section, glue it right on my paper, and then I'm all set. So that is this project, Cutting Color. It's a fun one. If you have any questions, just let me know.